Hello and welcome to a special edition of Faith and Friends. I'm Jennifer Beck and today I'm joined by someone many of you have come to know and love here on Faith and Friends. Dr. Trudy Pieper is with us. Dr. Trudy is from Phoenix Wellness in Johnstown, Ohio, but you've seen her on our program many times providing lots of very valuable health information. And Trudy, I'm so happy to have you here for the whole show today. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. I am excited about the things that we're going to be talking about, but uh, you have been very, very busy lately. You have a, uh, tell me just a little synopsis of what's been going on with you lately. Well, it's very exciting. I had an opportunity to uh, work on a book, which is uh, a dream that I had always hoped to do. And um, I'm almost the telling of this, it's been quite a process, a year in the making, but Zonerman Press um, gave me a contract to work with them on a book on prevention is the cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. And this is the viewpoint from a naturopathic doctor uh, and a Christian view of how can cancer actually can be prevented with the right information. Wow, now that's a topic itself that we could talk for an entire 30 minutes, probably 30 days about, and that was impromptu. Trudy didn't even know I was gonna ask her about that. So <laughs> definitely in the weeks and months to come, we're gonna wanna talk more about that book. But we've got lots and lots of health topics that we are going to be discussing in today's show because you know, it is hard to turn anywhere in the news, in your neighborhood, in your home, any place without facing the topic of health head on. So today we're gonna to bring you several important topics and let's just run down a few of those briefly as we get ready for our show. Trudy, what focuses are we having today on our show? We have several focuses that we're looking at. Um, we're gonna be talking about cholesterol and when it needs to be of concern and when it does not. And today, what are some ways to keep and make sure your kids are having a healthy diet? We have some simple and important tips Plus, our food segment today offers a simple yet effective liver cleanse. And we'll talk about why it's so important to do a cleanse like this, plus a lot more, Jennifer. That's right, lots and lots to come up. You know, Zach is our food guy and he just actually asked me, so what's our food segment today? And because unlike normal, Zach's actually not running the food segment. We've got Dr. Trudy here to help us with it. And when I said a liver cleanse, he went, Hmm, that will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting and important is definitely a good thing. Well, being the health nut that I am, I am really looking forward to all of the tidbits of information we're gonna bring to you today. But as always, we wanna start with the scriptures. And today that takes us to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses seven through nine. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Important things to remember because with God, all things are possible. Even in times when it doesn't seem like things are possible, God can make a way when there truly is no way. Well, time now for some health news. We're gonna start our day focusing on some things that have been in the news recently. Insight on some things you may have heard about in the media and maybe you want to know a little bit more. Well, our first topic involves one of my favorite restaurants. That was not true. That is not one of my favorite <laughs> restaurants. It is McDonald's. And Trudy, it was recently announced that the fast food giant plans to limit antibiotic use in chickens. Now, I have to admit, when I first heard this, I really wondered if this was even possible for them and what this all meant. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, recent declaration by McDonald's. It's really huge. Um, many people do not realize that McDonald's sells more chicken product than beef product. Hmm. So with uh, the decision to only buy antibiotic-free chicken, it will impact how chickens are being raised nationwide. Um, the company says it will do it over the next two years. They'll make the transition. And currently by volume right now, more antibiotics are, are used on animals than on mm. people. And that's where the problem, Jennifer, comes in. That once we consume those animals and they get into our bodies, then we're having more antibiotics into our system. And what we're seeing because of that, according to the Central Center on D Disease Control, is that uh, we are now having huge amounts of bacteria and infections that are antibiotic resistant. Uh, last year, over two million people were affected with illnesses that were hard to be cured from the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And 23,000 uh, people actually died because wow. there were no antibiotics to help them. And that number, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, 23,000, is huge in the fact that it's more people than died from AIDS last year in this wow. country. 
from antibiotics. Wow. And we could talk about this for a long, long time, but these are gonna be quick health tips. So we're gonna move on to a second one before we get into uh, some major topics of the day, and that is cholesterol. You hear about cholesterol left and right all over the place. What are the numbers supposed to be for cholesterol? Well, there was a recent study that came out talking about cholesterol in food maybe is not the concern that we've been told it is. This is so exciting. After 40 years of the U.S. government telling us that we should not consume saturated fat, which are butter, eggs, red meat, um, a new report that will be coming out this spring being released by the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Agriculture that they are not actually clogging our arteries. Mm -hmm. That a new findings tell us they have very little impact on the cholesterol in our blood. So how would you suggest that if somebody is hearing this and they think, oh, I can make a diet change, should they, should they schedule an appointment with a doctor? Who, who should they talk with before they just suddenly make these changes into their, their dietary Absolutely, things. this is something they, they need to talk to their doctor, their physician about um, their health and how this will impact their life. Because there are many things that will actually do cause more cholesterol in your bloodstream. So making sure that you're not um, having those in your system. Uh, people who have diabetes or more sugar in their system, people under heavy stress, and uh, people who have a tendency to be dehydrated more, all will have more cholesterol in their blood. Mm -hmm. And it all has to do with those lipoproteins you hear the doctors talk about so much, that if you have more of the good lipoproteins, the high density lipoproteins, their job is to go around and pick up the extra cholesterol in your blood and haul it back um, but to your liver to get it recirculated again. So there are a lot of factors involved here, but for a healthy adult, um, actually eating more red meat or butter uh, or those wonderful eggs, which I love, mm -hmm. will not impact the cholesterol in your blood. Well, this kind of goes with you. My mother-in-law lived till she was 90, and how many times did I hear her talk about the whole milk and the butter and all of the things that were, they were eating back then that nobody was telling them not to eat, and you see people living for a long, long time. So. I'm excited to hear this. It, it's great. Um, we see in my office so many people who are having problems with D3 deficiency. Mm. And the doctors are now prescribing 5,000, 10,000 IUs of D3. And that's because D is a fat soluble vitamin. Without enough fat in our bodies, we can't ab absorb it into our system. Vitamin A and vitamin D are the same way. So mm. it, it's kind of exciting to see that maybe now we're going to have some healthier people overall. Oh, exciting news. Dr. Trudy Pieper with Phoenix Wellness in Johnstown, Ohio is my co-host on today's Faith and Friends. And as Trudy mentioned at the top of the show, one of our health topics for today is eating habits for children. We've already talked about eating and cholesterol, eating in McDonald's. Well, new guidelines were recently released by a leading U.S. pediatricians group urging a more practical, common sense approach toward nutrition. And with the goal of improving children's diets and health, both in school and at home, in today's OIO In the Community Health segment, Trudy and I are going to talk more about these new guidelines and how parents can make sure they are promoting a healthy diet for their children. As we always work with our children, we want to be positive. And one of the things that this talks about is it advises parents what they should encourage their children to eat, not what not to eat. Mm. So putting that in a different perspective, it's basically the same foods that we've talked about. The five food groups that we want to make sure our children eat from are fruits and vegetables, whole grains, dairy, and proteins. And the, the goal was that we would be intentional about making sure that these children, our children, eat from all five food groups. We find that most children are avoiding vegetables. <laughs> and so that making sure that they have those servings every day will make a big difference in their health. Additionally, provide a wide variety from each of those five groups. I always like to tell people, eat from the colors of the rainbow. Mm. We miss out, we get in such a rut. Um, I know as a, a mom, Jennifer, I found it was easy to make the same foods mm -hmm. day after day after day. So uh, it's encouraging parents to be more creative and maybe choose something different every week that you've never fixed before and allow your children an opportunity to try those foods. Uh, and, and then this is my favorite as being a natural um, health <laughs> doctor, is that the, you should feed children from the food groups in their most least processed state. Ah. Meaning, instead of eating apple sauce, try apple slices. Okay. Looking to make sure that the foods are getting in their whole foods form. 
And a fourth layer there is encourage us to use a small amount of sugar, fat, and salt to transition kids into healthy foods. It's difficult if the children have not been used to healthy foods. Mm they're not gonna to wanna to eat those. So you can't entirely take away the sugar, the fat, and the salt from their diets and expect them to wanna to eat. So maybe adding a little sour cream mix into dipping those vegetables or some peanut butter on that celery may help them wanna eat that, encourage them. And finally, uh, the serve appropriate sized portions for the child's age. Um, and, and that's difficult because we're not always sure what is the appropriate mm -hmm. size. Well, according to building, um, buildinghealthykids.com, they have a wonderful chart there that talks about for ages one to six, fruit is a half a cup serving, vegetables is a fourth a cup, meat is one ounce, dairy is a half a cup, and grains are one ounce. So that's from ages one to six. And you about double that for children who are older than that. One word that you used is, is really good, being intentional. I think yes. that's the first thing parents have to do is we are busy, we are constantly moving. It's easier to just grab this bag of this or, or pull that thing or open this can and pour this out. But in the end, we are creating habits that aren't good, but we're also filling our kids with things that are not good. So you've presented us with five simple intentional ways to step by step make that change and I think that's one thing that's important maybe we've got a parent at home saying okay I'm making this change tomorrow but realistically maybe it's something they should plan on intentionally easing in I would imagine well they are it's important um, again making lifestyle changes is you have to be intentional you have to plan ahead and there's a couple other suggestions I might throw out there just may help you in this process first of all don't ban junk food food outright. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult. You just It's easier to, to limit the number of treats than banning them completely. Mm -hmm. So if your children's used to eating bags of gummy bears, <laughs> heaven forbid, <laughs> but if it is something that's important to them, you don't want to take that away. So maybe you're going to have them have 10 gummy bears today. Mm -hmm. And every day, that's all they'll get. So making, um, being, again, intentional about planning ahead for that. Another one is because when children are out of our sight, like at school, it's difficult for them to make choices. Mm -hmm. So you get that menu. I know they send it home every week, what's on the school lunch menu. And if they're going to purchase at school, go over the lunch menu with them. And then have them help you pick out what's going to be the best choice for them. What's mm -hmm. the healthiest choice on this? Make that decision in advance so when they get to school, they'll know what they should mm -hmm. pick out and eat. Mm -hmm. It's already been planned ahead. Um, another thing that's easy is today, Sam's Clubs and, and all these places where you can go buy bulk foods in huge quantities. Mm -hmm. And I know I had three big eaters at my home and it was easier to buy things. But when you have a big bag of cheese doodles, everyone sits there and they <laughs> consume cheese doodles. Yes. There, there's nothing left of the cheese doodles. <laughs> so my suggestion would be to put them in smaller containers. Um, it, it just one serving size and they can grab those containers or bags and know this is limit the amount that they have. And for tweens, teenagers or teenagers, the easy thing is to run, we've already talked about McDonald's, to run to McDonald's uh -huh. and get a chocolate shake. Well, a chocolate shake is 880 calories. Oh my. So <laughs> drinking your calories is almost as bad as eating too many calories because mm -hmm. it goes so much quickly and you don't even realize that you're eating mm -hmm. so many. Well, speaking of children, we could talk all day long about them, but at TV44, we don't want to just nourish them with food, but we also want to nourish their soul. Amber Chambers has an update on some recent changes to our Saturday morning programming lineup. Amber? Thanks, Jennifer. At TV44, we desire to offer food for the soul for all ages, but on Saturday mornings, we do have the kids in mind and are excited to share with you our new Saturday morning lineup, which just started this past Saturday. What are we adding? Superbook. Yes, you may have grown up with Superbook and hopefully remember it well. Superbook can now be seen every Saturday morning at 8. Here is the entire morning schedule. 7 a.m. Donkey Ollie, 7.30 a.m. Sugar Creek Game, 8 a.m. Superbook, 8.30 Tween You and Me, 9 a.m. Aqua Kids, and 9.30 a.m. Dragonfly TV. Please join us in praying for the kids who will be watching these programs on Saturday mornings that they're not just drawn to the programs, but through these shows their ears are also drawn to Christ. Now it's time for our food segment. Here's Zach. Well, thank you, Amber. This week's Lost Creek Care and Rehabilitation food segment involves a recipe that'll do more than just fill your stomach, but will also flush out a lot of things we don't want in our stomachs. All right, Trudy, so you've got us here on set. <laughs> I want to start, I think the first step before we even get into it should be renaming this recipe because it's, it's called the Liver Cleanse Recipe Gentle Cleanse. 
that's not exactly <laughs> hasn't enticed me. <laughs> <laughs> when they when they said we're gonna do a liver cleanse recipe, I thought, uh <laughs> Well, obviously, no. this is your first time. So we this is be, my first we time. We have to be gentle on your first time to make sure you understand what you're doing, and you're okay. going to feel so much better after you do this, Zach. Okay. I'm going to refer to it as the sunrise sparkling fruit juice drink that kind of helps your liver. That will, that will con anyone into drinking it. <laughs> sunrise sparkling. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because we have these sunny that's lemons right. that we, we're going to we be doing. That's right. All right, so take us through it. Let's start. What do we have here on set with us? All right. First of all, it's very important to understand that a couple times a year, we need to cleanse our livers. And it's a very gentle process. You do not have to fast. It's one of those things where the liver is its a very smart organ. It's the largest organ in our body. Hmm. It weighs about three pounds. It's Ooh. located right underneath your liver, or underneath your rib cage um, on your right side. And its main job is to purify what is coming in and out of your body. Okay. So toxins and chemicals and preservatives that we take in every day and, the, and what we drink, what we eat, what the air we breathe has lots and lots of mm. chemicals in it. Mm. So this, by doing this a couple of times a year, you will clean your liver out. It'll, that helps build your immune system. It, um, if those people who are finding that their uh, liver enzymes are high, a little liver cleanse will lower those numbers down. Mm. It's great for people who have a little bit of gallbladder attack. Yeah. It'll help mm. um, eliminate those gallstones out of your gallbladder. And what it does, it, it forms bile, which is a green soapy uh, substance that shoots from the liver into the gallbladder and then helps us to form our stools. What that bile does, it captures all the toxins and pulls it out through your system. Oh, okay. wow. So it's really important that we do this. This one is a, a recipe that you're supposed to do it three days in a row. Now, however, if you have some chronic health issues, if you've never done a cleanse before, you wanna check with your doctor first hmm. to make sure that they're okay with that. And you also wanna maybe go more gently. If you've cleansed before or you're in excellent health, you can do this three days without any problems. If not, maybe you want to do it one day a week for three weeks, okay. as opposed to three days in yeah. a row. It's a more okay. gentle approach to making that happen. Okay. All right. So now, how do we do that? First of all, we start with apple juice or cranberry. Off to organic. a good start. I like there apple juice. There we go. One yeah. cup. Do we put this? You want this in the blender? Yes. We're going to go ahead okay. and do that as we do. Cut this here. And while we're getting ready for the next things, we need to have two lemons and you need to freshly squeeze. I've already done one, so we'll go ahead and squeeze the other half of that. Okay. And at the same time while we're doing that, I'm gonna ask Zach to put one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Well, I don't, we don't have a tablespoon on set here with us, so <laughs> we're trusting my kitchen abilities to gauge a tablespoon. Just eyeball it there. Ooh. You guys can say stop. Okay. Uh, go. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's very good. I just put three tablespoons. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Extra cleansing. That's Extra right. cleansing going on there. My wife would be much better at this than I would. But. All right. So go ahead go and dump that in there. In there. And how much, juice. How much lemon juice was this? That's juice of two lemons. Okay. Then next we have our wonderful ginger root. Mm. And this ginger root uh, will help also with the process of cleansing. It's great for your stomach also if you have an upset stomach, ginger roots to do it. You peel off a half an inch and you take the little bark off of this and you chop up in pieces and you throw that into the blender. Okay. We'll pass that over. Next will be a clove of garlic. Now I want to make sure people understand this is a clove, <laughs> this is a bulb. You don't put the whole bulb in there, you will not be oh, able wow. to drink it. It's a good thing you did not ask me to put the, and the one uh, time, garlic One time in. on TV, Andy, <laughs> Andy ate garlic on <gasps> television. He had never oh. done it before, and I, if I can only tell you what it smelled like yeah. around here. It was, he had to eat a bunch of blueberries pretty afterwards. Pretty bad. <laughs> and next, all right, so we take the garlic, the garlic you smash that garlic, make That's sure that you release still... all the wonderful enzymes in there, throw that in there. Smells good also. Oh, you can hardly wait. Were you supposed to wait. smash the garlic? I did, I smashed oh, it in smashed advance. It. Oh, good. We're already I smashed the, and the ready the apple to juice, go. So. And we'll make sure we put a cup of, of spring, uh, distilled or spring, or reverse osmosis water okay. into okay. that. And I think that that's everything that we have to do here. So All one right. more time quickly, that was? One cup organic fruit juice, apple works, or cranberry. Okay. And you're also then gonna do two squeezed lemons, mm -hmm. a half an inch of ginger peel first. You're going to take one cup of distilled or spring water, one tablespoon virgin olive oil, okay. and you put that all in your blender. All right, this all right. I can do, I think. Are we ready? Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, 
Oh, it looks good. It it's, it's looks all right. It <laughs> How long are we going? Just till it's... Just till it's blended. Okay. Okay, well, you know, right. it doesn't look it looks half like bad there. It looks like a nice smoothie fruity type. smoothie. Yeah. That's what you tell yourself. Fruity smoothie. And now there's, is this best to take at a certain time of day? You or? should do this first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Okay. It makes about two cups, and you do have to work your way through that. So give yourself plenty of time through the day, to just uh, in the morning, to drink through. You need both of those cups, two 16 ounces, for your breakfast. Both of these... So it makes 16 ounces and you need to drink the whole thing mm. to be able to get the whole benefit of the lever cleanse. All righty, maybe we can okay. see. <laughs> Are you ready? Cheers. All right, here we go. To your Why lever. Not? To, to your liver. Newly healthy liver. To a liver. better immune system. To feeling good, taking your pain away. Getting rid of oh, toxins. I think this is very palatable. What well, is the lemon mm. with the apple mm -hmm. juice? The lemon, it, you can definitely tell. Yes, mm -hmm. but yeah. the, the apple juice sweetens it up just a little bit, mm -hmm. and with just a little bit of the garlic, not the whole bulb, <laughs> you can really get that down. It might be a ginger. little oily, but that could be my part. <laughs> <laughs> well, a measuring that's, spoon could help that's in, right. in these. these it's things. actually very good. I, I could drink this mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing sometimes are side effects that with this may be is that is called a healing crisis. If you all of a sudden just feel like you're coming down with a cold or you're mm. just a little more sluggish it's just the toxins are now being cleansed out of your body ah. that's a good sign all right hmm. all right well you know this may be something we have to do regularly here on the faith and friends cleanse our livers together. andy and mark have no idea what they're <laughs> soon soon all right we're going to throw it back to amber to tell us a little bit more about some special programming coming up on wtlw Thanks, Zach. Jennifer and Dr. Trudy return shortly to talk about spring exercise ideas. But first, we have some very special programming during the month of April coming to us from Liberty University. Four weeks of Liberty University convocations. Last week, we brought you a message from Clayton King. This week, the featured speaker is Kirk Franklin, and the title of his message, Life is a Relay. A Faith of America's Favorite Bachelor is our topic for our program airing the week of April 19th with featured speaker Sean Lowe. Watch these special Liberty University Convocation specials every Wednesday in April at 9 p.m. And we'd like to hear your thoughts on these and other special programs, which are made possible thanks to the support of our viewers. Share your comments by emailing us at contact at WTLW.com. Now back to Jennifer and Dr. Trudy Pieper. Thank you, Amber. What a blessing it is to be able to bring good quality movies to all of you here on TV44. Well, you've all seen me flash my favorite running mugs on this show a few times. I actually forgot to bring my, my coffee cup mugs today. But those are a reflection of my interest in physical fitness. And Dr. Trudy is joining us again here to talk more about important things that you need to be doing this spring and getting motivated. And exercising is one of them, right? No one has an excuse not to do it. Exactly. There's so many good reasons besides the fact we all want to look great. You know, put on our shorts and our swimsuits this year. One of them, there are a lot more, a lot more reasons why we need to do this. Now, getting motivated is another s subject because I know you're motivated all the time. It doesn't take much. <laughs> Jennifer's out running every week. I need a goal this year. One of my bucket lists was to walk a half marathon. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes setting a goal mm -hmm. and then making yourself do that is another way to help you get out and get exercise. But some of the good reasons is mood. Jennifer, mm -hmm. you can change your mood just by exercising. The, when you exercise, it produces endorphins. Mm -hmm. We've all heard about that, which helps you re reduce your stress. It makes you feel good, makes you feel relaxed. So if you're having a bad day, you should get out and walk a little bit, do a little exercise. So I should know what, what's being told when my family or my husband says, you should just go running. It's really not for my fitness. Huh? No, it's a hint. <laughs> 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 yes, Jennifer. <laughs> and then two, how many people um, have a hard time sleeping? If you don't sleep well at night, you probably need to exercise more. Mm -hmm. It's been shown that 67% of people who regularly exercise have a great, not a good, a great mm -hmm. night's sleep because of the exercise. And it was interesting that it doesn't matter, Jennifer, whether you exercise in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. It still will produce a better quality sleep. So you want a better sleep? Get out and exercise. Strengthens your memory. We don't often think about that, but when you have that blood that's pumping through your brain, it, uh, it will um, increase more hormones that stimulate mm -hmm. your, your thought processes. It makes you more creative. 
uh, a lot of things will boost your energy. Yeah. Um, it can reduce the risk of cancer. Wow. How about that? By um, linking more exercise and lower risk of breast and uterine cancer. So if you want to get more oxygen in your body, which helps uh, counter cancer cells, you should exercise. So what would qualify as exercise? You know, somebody like me who is used to running quite a few miles or being very active, the things that I can handle are probably going to be a little different than somebody who's just saying, yeah, I need to get started. Is there a target amount of time or maybe number of days a week? Or what would be a good beginning pattern that doesn't overdo too much too quickly? People tend to get so excited about it that they set these outrageous goals they cannot accomplish. So first of all, be really realistic. And what you want to do is 20 minutes. If you can do 20 minutes three times a week, that's a great way to start walking. Start off with a little aerobic exercise, but you want to eventually add some resistance. So if you're walking, maybe you should get those little weight doohickey things mm. that you put around your wrists and, mm -hmm. your, and your ankles and walk along and that'll also help you not only re uh, reduce your weight, but give you more strength and, dam and, and stamina and endurance. Mm. Of course, there's lots and lots of more things that we could talk about exercise. I want to remind you that Dr. Trudy Peeper is with the Phoenix Wellness in Johnstown, Ohio. Her phone number is on the screen, and we're certainly appreciative of all the health tips that she brings us many times here on Faith and Friends. Last week, you heard her talk about honey, and in the weeks to come, we're going to have a lot more things from her as well. Well, if you are appreciative of health tips like these we've been giving you, we want to remind you that TV44 is a, is a viewer-supported TV station, and we are so thankful to those who contribute financially and partner with TV44, either with a one-time gift, an annual gift, or a monthly contribution so we can bring shows like Faith and Friends. Well, we still have three weeks left in our Spring to Life Capital Campaign. And Trudy, you want to take a moment and just read, uh, just read some of the names of people who have given to our campaign so far this spring. Wonderful. We want to do a shout out to Gerald and Shirley Ladd. Thank you so much for your gift. That's in Landeck, Ohio. Carol Manor from Bryant. We want to thank you for making your generous gift. Barry Fremont Sr. from Delphus. Uh, thank you for all you folks in Delphus who've been contributing. Dorothy Zimmerle from Ada, thank you so much for your gift to us. Uh, Mike Niekamp from St. Henry, another gift. Stephen Settlemeyer, thank you so much for your gift. All right, these are just uh, a few of literally the dozens of you who are joining with us as we spring to life this spring through TV44. A reminder that 100% of your financial contribution is used to support the mission of TV44. And one more reminder, we have four safe, secure, and convenient ways that you can partner financially with us. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, donate securely at our website, WTLW.com, and just click on the Donate Now button. You can mail your gift to 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. Give us a call and donate by credit card, 339-4444. Or you can sign up for automatic monthly withdrawal. Never have to write another check. For information on that, just email us at contact at WTLW.com. And the Spring to Life campaign continues through May 11th. And believe it or not, we are out of time. We could have talked for a lot longer, couldn't we? We certainly could. <laughs> that will bring our show to a close. Trudy, thank you so very much for being with us today and sharing so much of your knowledge, your, your God-given knowledge that you have. Appreciate it greatly. Well, I really thank you and uh, the fabulous work that TV44 is doing in the community to help people know about Christ. It's, uh, it, health is important, but only secondary mm -hmm. to knowing Christ. So thank you for the opportunity to be Amen. here. Well, on that note, we do want to uh, close with one more reading of our scripture. Trudy, would you mind sharing it with us? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full of acceptance. As always, if you have questions about this or any scripture we share or anything about your spiritual life at all, you can give us a call here at TV44. 419-339-4444 is our main number and our prayer line is 419-339-3000. Well, for Dr. Trudy Pieper at Phoenix Wellness and myself, Jennifer Beck, and all of us here at TV44, thanks for joining us on this special health edition of Faith